Hello, and welcome to season two of Bright Ideas, the show designed to illuminate your investing. I'm your host, Rob Phil, and I'm, wait, this is a new season, right? Can I do it? Okay, I've always wanted to do this. Previously on Bright Ideas. We learned a lot about getting a confident start as an investor by understanding your goals and leaning into your interests. Beanie, beanie, beanie. I learned so much through the first season of Bright Ideas with investing. There's always more to know, and if there's one thing my 30s have taught me, it's that you're always learning, like it or not. But I'm excited to be back for a new series of conversations with some friends at Fidelity who dive deep into different areas of investing. This is Bright Ideas Season 2. With the new season, we also took the opportunity recently to ask you, the audience, where your head is at around some common investing scenarios. Stick around for the end of the episode when we'll share some surprising results. We thought it would be helpful to kick off with a refresher on some investing fundamentals. Think of this as your ABCs of investing. Now, Montana Saltzman could spell and apply most any investing concept there is, but today she's going to cover some of those ABCs for us. Montana, welcome to Bright Ideas. Thanks, Rod. I'm excited to be here as you start a new season. Yeah, new season, new set, exciting stuff. But before we jump in, tell us about yourself. Sure, I'm an investment product manager at Fidelity with a specialty in a type of investment vehicle known as an ETF. I did learn the term ETF last season, but before we unpack that, let's go even more fundamental. So starting with just some basics, what is a stock, what is a bond, and what's the difference? So I like to describe it as a stock is when you own part of the company through your investment, and a bond is when the company has debt to you. They've borrowed from you, essentially, and that's your investment. And a bond is a fixed income instrument, like an individual company bond or a treasury bill, and you're paid back at regular intervals. And for those who, like me, a year ago, didn't know what that means, it's your return on investment, which just proves that I'm getting smarter every year. That's also an ROI to go along with our ABC theme. Exactly, and now that we have stocks and bonds, we have the building blocks to graduate up to what are known as pooled investments. Love a pool moment. Essentially, it's when funds in a portfolio have been pooled for many individual investors and aggregated for the purpose of investment. So with a pooled investment, shareholders often have the opportunity to own many stocks or bonds of different companies rather than buying them individually. Two of the most popular are ETFs and mutual funds. Great, so let's start with ETFs. What does it stand for? I want you to explain it to me like I'm a 6'4", fifth grader, which is terrifying to think about. So sure, ETFs stand for exchange traded funds. So what that means is it's traded on a stock exchange like the NASDAQ. Because it's made up of multiple investments, as we said, it's essentially a basket of securities traded throughout the day. For people who may be new to investing, ETFs can offer a convenient way to help diversify a portfolio. For example, there's no minimum investment at Fidelity. You can purchase in any dollar amount. And with the thousands of ETFs that are available, if investors are interested in specific themes or industries, then that's certainly available to them. Great, so mutual funds were the other type of pooled investment you mentioned earlier. What else should we know about mutual funds? Mutual funds are investment vehicles that can be made up of stocks and bonds. Unlike ETFs, they're not traded throughout the day. They're priced once at the end of the day. They're certainly still a convenient way to help diversify your portfolio, but some investors will appreciate the efficiency of ETFs. Another thing to keep in mind is that mutual funds don't have the same transparency as ETFs. So their holdings, or the stocks and bonds included in the fund, are typically disclosed on a monthly or quarterly basis. So that seems important if you value transparency, and who doesn't? Definitely. An investing journey is full of opportunities for motivated investors to dig in and do their research. And one of those ways is the discovery process of what investing themes they can align with through an ETF or a mutual fund, if an investor doesn't have the interest in or the bandwidth for daily check-ins. I wish you could tell my boss that I no longer have the interest or bandwidth for a daily check-in. <laughs> So it's the difference between being active and passive, but I know these terms can have a different meaning in your world than the way I just use them, which is more about not having a strong opinion when my friends are trying to pick a spot for dinner. Right, in the context of these pooled investments we're talking about, what active means is that there's a portfolio manager running the fund in a very hands-on way. And in a passive option, the fund is tracking an index, so there's a degree of automation there. A lot of industries we know have those differences, like going on a group tour of a museum or getting the private tour from the actual curator of the exhibit. Either way, we're going to see some masterpieces on our little field trip. That's right, when you invest in a passive ETF or mutual fund, for example, an investor would own all, or almost all, of the stocks or bonds in a particular index the fund tracks. So so that means they will own the best performers, the ones in the middle of the pack, but also those that may be underperforming. But with an actively managed investment, a portfolio manager and team of analysts use their in-depth research, expertise, and technology to try and identify the stocks and bonds that are best positioned to outperform. So what are some 
other questions investors like myself can ask as they start to figure out what kind of investor they're going to be. Definitely, what are my goals? And the answer could be longer term, like saving for retirement, or shorter term, like saving for a house. Young people are busy. They're investing time and energy in their career and their relationships. Pooled investments give you some time back in that you don't have to follow stocks or the financial markets if you don't want to. And then there's the passage of time, letting that interest your investments are earning compound and grow. That feels like a great moment to review what the audience shared with us in a recent poll about the mindset they're bringing into investing. Let's take a look at how fluent the insider audience is feeling in their investing ABCs. Here's a look at feelings about ETFs and mutual funds. So there is some uncertainty there, which is interesting. So how and when should investing happen? Yeah, I'm not sure exercise is the most motivating comparison for me. This one asked how new investors see themselves operating. Okay. I'm a visual learner, so this is helping me a lot. For you transparency seekers, we know ETFs are a good way to go. That's all very interesting. I think what's good about these pooled investment options we've talked about today is that they're flexible enough to meet those new investors where they are. What are some good resources for viewers who want to go from ABCs to ETFs? Now I just feel like we're playing Wordle. Fidelity.com has some great resources for digging a little deeper into pooled investment vehicles. I encourage exploring them to see what appeals to you. Thank you so much for kicking off this new season with us, Montana. I was really glad you're here. You're welcome. Feels like it's off to a great start. And now that we know our ABCs, the sky's the limit. And that's where we'll be looking next time. See you then.